When you've got your children with you, you have to teach them how to get out of the danger zone. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Buenos Aires in Argentina. The new Mantis X10 firearms performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. What we see here is a middle school and you can see dad here in the circle riding his daughter on his moto. And this is very common there. And when they get off, you see the other two guys show up on the moto and brandish a gun at them and demand the motorcycle. So dad is going to jump off the motorcycle with his daughter, toss the keys across the street. When he does, that makes the moto robber mad, actually shoots at them, hits the daughter in the back of her backpack. Thankfully, the backpack stopped it. He shoots again and everybody starts to scatter. Now, once he does, then dad and, and daughter are going to bounce out of there. Bad guy goes and gets the keys to the moto. While all these students are still standing around trying to figure out, oh my gosh, what the heck are we doing here? They're going to finally get kind of out of the danger zone. You can see those couple students hiding behind the car. Some others are just kind of wandering and waiting and just hoping to, you know, not be seen because they don't move. Bad guy is going to ride off. And you can see the pictures here from the daughter's backpack that the bullet went through and uh, lodged, I think, in her water bottle there. Thank God for that because it didn't go all the way through and injure her. But thankfully, no one was hurt. The moto was lost. And that's where this one ends. Scary stuff. Super grateful that they were able to get out of the danger zone. Did you know that every single month now we are doing a new lesson for everyone? online as well as in person, hit the link in the description to our website. You'll find what this month's video is and what we're doing to bring education to people all over the world. Let's get to lessons from this one. I really want to encourage all parents out of this one to think about your children in your defensive plan, especially once they're old enough to kind of operate semi-independently from you. When you got little tiny toddlers or something, you can't do this. But when you have children that are maybe six, seven years old and up, they can listen to commands and they can learn emergency plans. So we always have had in my world the word emergency as an emergency plan that my children know that if I say the word emergency, listen to what I say next, don't question me, just go do it. And I'd really recommend all parents to adopt a similar paradigm, even if you don't use that word emergency. Now, let's think about our vehicle as well. We see this all the time on the channel. The second your vehicle is stopped, it is a transitional space. It is a valuable item in and of itself and bad guys will target you for it. And this is all over the world. Does not depend on location for that at all. And when the vehicle is stopped, it is a transitional space and is a place that attack is more likely. So pay attention in your world, specifically when your vehicle is stopped. Now, not only that, I mean, when your vehicle's moving, it's not very, very uh, dangerous from that perspective, from other perspectives, but not that one. Now then, they're gonna get off the bike here and this guy brandishes a gun. Again, there's that time for using that emergency word here. And now they're gonna get off and dad flings the keys. Now I get that and I think he's trying to save his, uh, you know, himself and his daughter and thinking if I throw the keys way over there, he'll think about going to the keys. But instead, the bad guy in this particular instance took that as a personal assault. And so he shot at them and hit the daughter. A couple things out of that. Number one, that's just pure evil. And pure evil like that does exist in the world to just shoot an innocent child because of an ego challenge from her father. But second of all, probably the best thing to do is throw him the other way over the top of the guy because then at least he's thinking you're throwing him at him and you just missed or something like that and the chances of him seeing it as an ego fight is a little bit less. Now notice here as well that dad kind of turned around and went back like was looking at him. I can't tell you enough. Don't just run away from danger. Run to safety. Run towards something. Run to a place and get the heck out of there as far as you can. If they want the car, the motorcycle, whatever, toss the keys away from yourself towards them again so that they don't see it as a personal affront and then run and keep Keep running because the fact that he didn't keep running here left him in the danger zone left him in a spot where he could have been continued to be hurt thankfully he wasn't and they were able to get off and away from there now let's think about these other students here that are moving and they did a pretty good job there in the beginning of using this car as cover, right? You know, because through the block and all that stuff could actually be cover and the whole thing is concealment. But recognize that whether it's cover or concealment, that changes on a second by second basis. When the bad guy comes around this side here, that is no longer cover or concealment because he has moved. So I know we get this discussion of cover and concealment on the channel from time to time. Just recognize that it will only keep you safe for a few seconds. So you have to continue to think. You can't just hide. You have to be the hunter and not the rabbit. This is a very important point. 
Now then, we see these uh, students that are still just kind of standing there doing nothing and, and going, oh no, maybe if I just stand here, then nothing bad will happen to me. I can't tell you, I really think that's the worst idea. And most bad guys can't hit the broadside of a barn past about 10 yards. So get as far away from them as fast as you can. And I get it, people are gonna be really frustrated about the fact that you know nobody stepped in to stop this guy or whatever. But recognize he's already shot at people. We can see that here and he's already shot at a little girl. Always assume a bad guy is willing to use a gun, okay? Always assume that if they brandish a firearm, that they are willing to use it. So of course, if the if dad was armed here, if somebody else in the, one of the bystanders was armed here, it's a different story. But particularly if you aren't, your best thing to do is get the heck out of the danger zone. Now, of course, would I rather all good people be armed here, be able to stop these bad guys? Yes, absolutely, 100%. This is why I'm a Second Amendment absolutist. And I would recommend to every single follower of active self-protection that if you're an Asper and you can carry a firearm, you should. That said, not everybody can and not everybody does. And so when you don't do the right thing, be smart about your self-defense, get the heck out of the danger zone and cover your ASP.